Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, first of all, thank. Give a big, yeah. huge round of applause for all the sponsors, man. We would not be here. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to talk about testing defensive controls with uh, Atomic Operator. If you're not familiar, I'll explain it a little bit, but Atomic Operator is an open source tool that I developed. Um, we'll go through. But I wanted to actually go through some of the process of how you actually test some of your defensive controls. So we'll walk through that. Uh, again, my name is Josh Rickard. Uh, this is actually me in the, the mask. Uh, but I have a background in a blue team, specifically digital forensics and incident response. Uh, I like to automate anything and most uh, things, and I love to release open source tools. Uh, hence, I call myself an open sourcer. All right, I want to get the drip. Okay, cool. Um, I didn't say I was fun at all. The, uh, my Twitter is uh, at MS Administrator. It's not Mrs. It's uh, it's Microsoft Administrator. Back when I. Uh, did admin stuff. So uh, github.com slash MS Administrator or my blog, uh, it's letsautomate.it uh, and I just talk about automation stuff. Uh, that's enough about it. So security testing, what is it, right? It is the process of verifying all your, well, some of your defensive controls uh, and making sure that they're either they're in place and are working as you, you expected, right? It, it's pretty uh, pretty important for, for most organizations. But there's this entire process that, that you may have uh, around how you actually begin to test your controls. Uh, the first is going to be like determine. Uh, you need to actually determine all the goals, like what are your strategy around your testing and what you're going to uh, try to, um, what are you trying to defend against. And then you need to actually create a plan and you will actually go in and execute that plan, uh, examine your results, and you know adjust as needed, as well as closure or um, how you can actually improve your defenses long, long term. We'll go through each one of these phases and, and sub bullets and all that, but I wanted to give you a high level of where we're at. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Okay. Interaction is awesome. So just yell shit. I don't care. And sorry for the customers. Uh, define expected outcomes, right? So we need to actually define what we're trying to test and what we're trying to accomplish with, with our goal, uh, with this test. So we need to test against certain things. Uh, are we trying to actually test against a specific tool that's out there? Maybe, and I use this example a lot, but Mimikatz or uh, maybe some other tool that's out there. A uh, specific technique that's in the MITRE uh, attack framework, or your own framework, or your own um, your own standards, or a very specific threat actor. Depending on how mature you are in an organization, that may all depend. I recommend first just trying to test the basics, right? If you're if you're just getting started, more mature organizations they may be looking at like Charming Kitten or APT34 or all these other different uh, types of threat actors, they may be trying to have to uh, defend against them because they're in that vertical or in that industry. There are different types, like I said, of uh, different types of testing that we're gonna have to do, um, and it depends on your maturity and where you're wanting to focus. Uh, the general security, we're actually going to just test basic stuff, like can I um, escalate? Can I create a domain admin account? These are pretty basic, um, attack vectors that we can kind of uh, test our defensive controls, or maybe we actually want to even test products that, that are in our environment. There's the opposite side where you get into a more advanced uh, perspective, where is the adversary simulation and emulation. Uh, those are two different things, uh, and those are very specific to a um, variety or a, a bucket of threat actors. Uh, Tim Malcolmitter, anybody here know who that is? He's a pretty cool, pretty cool guy. I think he's at, uh, here in K City now. But um, he actually had this blog post on Medium. I had the link at the bottom. But he says that emulation implies an exactness to the copy, whereas simulation only implies similarity with some freedom to be different. Uh, that's pretty. That's really 
um, good to know because we need to, are we trying to emulate uh, a threat actor? I mean, we know there are TTPs. Or are we trying to you know, uh, get something along those lines, you know, and some variety there for our organization? So we need to understand that those are different things as well as your general security controls. So what are you wanting to test, right? You need to ask yourself, are you trying to test your endpoint configuration, maybe hardening rules that you have on your operating systems? Maybe you use group policy, maybe you don't, uh, but you try to actually, you know, prepare your defenses. Maybe you want to um, remove admin access. You know, what are the improvements? That there's a lot of different ways you can approach that. But maybe you want to test a product. Maybe you want to test your EDR. Maybe you want to test uh, some other, maybe DLP system or UAB, whatever. Um, but depending on that, we actually can then have to form our tests and our, and our stories and, and everything, and we'll get into that. But, uh, or you're testing detection rules. Maybe you already have a detection engineering, or at least some scope, um, where you have rules, you have uh, you know, logs in a central place, and you can actually run and, and uh, collect data. So you may be at that level. It just depends, right? And I just wanted to point all those uh, considerations out. So the strategy. This is really critical for starting out. Uh, as you mature, you'll, you'll go in and you, you'll be able to create these kind of uh, tests pretty easily. Uh, but at the beginning, you're probably going to use some sort of third party, uh, like Atomic Red Team, or um, if anyone's heard of MITRE, um, their adversary emulation project. Um, again, emulation versus simulation. But um, you can grab tests that they have and, and implement them in your environment and test against those common. And that, that's a great place to start because they're already defined for you. And they're pretty well known. In fact, if you're testing like EDR, most of them are probably going to block Atomic Red Team because it's, it's widely known. Uh, if they don't, then that's a call to your sales contact. Um, <laughs> they, but they should be protected against this. Uh, but then, once you actually mature and you want to build out you know, your, your threat um, defense testing, you actually can write your own test. Maybe you get it from a threat intel report from Talos or, or somewhere else. Then you want to actually take that technique and try it in your environment and then see the results and mature your organization as well as your defenses along the way. Again, Atomic Red Team is an awesome start. I shouldn't. I knew I shouldn't have used the dark background, but uh, this is uh, a test. It's all in YAML. Um, they have them in Markdown. This is like the Markdown rendering uh, on their on the GitHub repo. But it, this is the code or, or the um, the script that you would run to actually um, create a rogue uh, domain controller in an Active Directory environment. The reason they do that, just to kind of explain that briefly, is you can then change and, and convince other machines connecting to your domain controller, this fake domain controller, that I'm God, I'm domain admin, and then you can do a lot of dangerous stuff. So this is a pretty easy attack to kind of detect, and I use this as an example as we go through. So the first thing that I always do is create kind of a user story, like what are we trying to, to test? It's, it's, it's good for me. I have a, an engineering uh, software development kind of background, but uh, it is really good to have um, kind of this outline, at least give you guide rails of what you're trying to uh, test. So as a security analyst, a detection engineer, I want to detect and prevent the use of Mimikatz uh, to create, again, create a rogue active directory domain controller within my environment. So there's not specifics there. Um, we'll get into that, but this gives you a high level of where your scope is. And you just approach this, you just think, man, we really need to protect against malicious macros. Like how, you use that as a user story, and then later you can go and figure out all the details. But it gives you a starting point. So create that narrative. Uh, you can do the user story format, or I personally like uh, this given when then. Has anyone ever seen that uh, format? Okay. Uh, given when then is pretty common for uh, QA or, or software uh, development and uh, testing, but it allows you to kind of codify some things if you want to later. But 
It's, you know, given I'm a threat actor and I'm on Windows Server, maybe there's other ands in there as well. But when I run this command, borrowed from Atomic Red Team, then I'm able to create a rogue domain controller and the security team gets alerted. That's what you want to happen, right? Or maybe you want it to be a prevent and attack, right? So you may add a statement in there. But it gives you a way to actually just logically separate things out and understand a little bit further what your requirements are. The next piece is we need to create a plan. Once we have our strategy, we know what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to attack uh, or defend against, we need to create a plan around it. So to do that, we need to define some of the requirements, like what is in and out of scope. Uh, is, uh, we'll go into this a little bit, but is it a Windows machine, is it Linux, is Linux like out of there, is Mac out of there? Whatever that is, you just need to define that. At least in your head. It doesn't have to be totally written down, but, but it's a good idea. Uh, deliverables, like what is the expected outcomes, improvements. Maybe you just want um, to give a report. That there's a lot of different deliverables that, that could come out of it. And then you need to start figuring out what those environmental variables are. And, I'll, and I'll, we'll, we'll walk into that. So in and out of scope, right, is certain products out of scope. Like we don't want to, we want to test our EDR. Or uh, maybe our configuration we don't really care about. We just want to see if uh, whatever our EDR is causing alerts. Or maybe a different tool, maybe a combination of there. But you just need to understand what those are. That goes into you know, your, your environments and, and all that other stuff. Certain operating systems, again, is Windows in scope, but Linux is out. Or, and also the execution context. Meaning, is this a remote execution? Or something dropped on the box and it's all local? Or is it privileged escalation? So on and so forth. Uh, I went to the talk earlier, it was about safe breach. Uh, I hadn't seen that tool before. It looks pretty cool, so uh, shout out to, to them. I don't, I'm not paid by them, but yeah. If you want to give me a free license, I'll take it. Uh, define deliverables, right? We need to, what are those deliverables we're trying to accomplish? Simply, you know, maybe we just want to improve our defenses. That's great. Uh, if you're more mature, again, if you have a detection engineering, detection rules, Maybe you want to improve those. Maybe you already have a rule for this type of attack and you want to improve upon it because there's false positives and false negatives in there. Uh, maybe you want to improve, again, that configuration hardening, or you just want to report back out to you know, your, um, your boss saying, man, if we did this, we would reduce uh, our attack service by X number. Uh, whatever that is, you just need to define that so you know what success looks like. Because if you don't, I find myself, especially with uh, ADHD, I'll just go on rabbit holes and I'll just keep going. So I need to find like, what is that stopping point. You also have to understand those environmental variables I was talking about, where you have the operating system, uh, maybe even software, if you maybe have a gold image uh, in your environment, use that. Uh, standard configuration, but most people would receive. How do you actually verify your success, right? Um, do you, if you have logging, great. Do you have visibility? Did you even see that activity? Even if you don't have another, are you able to identify that activity? If not, that's an improvement that you need to make. Maybe it's a product. Again, if it's an EDR, if, you don't, if your EDR didn't light up, then there's a, there's a problem. You need to uh, understand those, those variables. Now we execute our test. So once we've created our plan, we know the environments uh, most of the time, we'll have to set those up, depending. If you don't have a SIM, set one up. Elastic is free, Splunk has a limited license. It's good, right, for, for basics. Um, once you prove it out, scale it up. Go to your boss and be like, hey, check this out. We can detect all this stuff. It, there's tons of resources. I have a, a project out there, it's called Elk TLS Docker. It's ELK-TLS-Docker and it is an entire ELK stack uh, with security enabled uh, in SSO, and it's all Dockerized. You just hit Docker Compose up, and it will set up pretty much everything for you. So there's projects out there, and I think Elastic just came out with their own, so um, they're out there. So now we need to execute our tests. This is where we get into the Atomic Operator. Atomic Operator is a Python package uh, that I built 
used to execute atomic red team test. Uh, soon it will uh, support that adversary emulation as well. Um, it's just not complete yet. And you can actually run these tests across multiple different operating systems, both locally and remotely. I'll explain that. So we have Linux, uh, we support Windows, Linux, and, and Mac OS. Again, local or remote. So from, if I'm on a Mac and I want to remote into a Windows, I can. If I'm on a Windows and I want to remote into a Linux, I can. And I can execute those, those tests. You can also use it just via the command line, and I'll show you that, as well as in your own automation or own scripts or own code um, through importable like Python uh, environments. You can select your inputs. So most of these tests have variables like uh, what is the path for this exe that you want to run, like where is the path of Mimikatz, or uh, what user account you want to use, and things like that. So you can actually select those both interactively uh, with the, the tool. And then you can actually take it even further and not run anything and use a configuration file that is all documented and stuff that will actually automate uh, that entire process about I've done up to 100 machines with it, so um, you can do a lot if you wanted to. This is how you install it. It's pip or pip3. Uh, most Mac uh, will have it you know, already installed. Uh, you just do pip3 install atomic operator, um, and if you already have it, you, I added the dash dash upgrade, upgrade to the latest. But if you were, once it installs, it installs this command line uh, tool called atomic operator, and then you can just run you know, you specify the name, the command, uh, the techniques, one or more. Uh, you can actually specify individual tests if you want. And then if you wanted to connect to it uh, remotely, you would uh, pass in like the host, username and password. There's other like SSH keys and all these other parameters. I'll show you that here in a minute. Actually right here. This is how you would use it in a, uh, your own script. So all the defaults are, are listed there. It's kind of hard to see, sorry. Uh, but all this is documented and uh, it's, it's on the website and I'll show you that here. But you can run techniques, you can select tests, run prereqs, clean up commands, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can do. But the basics are just run a command. And you provide that host and it'll run it remotely. Here's the repository, it's under um, github.com slash dot, uh, sorry, uh, atomic-operator or atomicoperator.com. I'm surprised that it was not taken, so I took it. And then uh, I actually did a Red Canary blog that kind of walks through that entire process as well. So once you've executed your, your test, now you need to examine those results, right? You need to make sure that, that they are working or they, the expected outcomes uh, occur. And so you need to ask yourself, you know, did your test execute? Uh, did you prevent it? Uh, <laughs> did you get an alert? All these type of questions are pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> but you, you still need to ask yourself and, and look into them. Uh, you know, it is work. Um, it, security's not gonna be solved in a day, so uh, there is some uh, manual work that we have to do, but you have to actually you know, understand what those results, and if you don't see anything and nothing happened, that's not good. You need to go. If you don't have a sim, please leave this audience right now. <laughs> Joking. You need to record what, what, what happened. No matter what, you need to add whatever that test is. Maybe you ran it and it blocked everything and you're good. Still, log it. Because six months down the road, you're gonna be like, damn, did I test that? And you're gonna forget. You also need to record your results. Again, both positive and negative. Like, be like, man, I just, I just got domain admin in like five seconds with all our security tools installed. <laughs> you need to fix that. So you need to record that. And I, and I recommend doing this all in like a central location. Like don't just keep it in your notebook or in your email or wherever. Uh, put it in a central place. And then anything that you do along that way, because it's going to take some research. It's going to take some Googling. It's going to take, you know, papers reading, whatever. But you actually, you know, need to record all those future considerations, improvements, uh, any notes, maybe even references. Um, so you can go back or someone else on your team can look at it in the future, so on and so forth. We also, at, the, at this, you know, once we're, we're satisfied, 
we go into the closure phase uh, of our testing, and it's really all about verifying. You know, we're going to verify that our requirements are met. We're going to make any suggestions of, of our findings at the end, as well as provide a general summary. And that general summary could just be for you, or it could be for people on your team or your entire work. Depends on, you know, your situation. Again, when we look at our statement of as a security analyst, detection engineer, I want to detect and prevent the use of Mimikatz to create a rogue Active Directory domain controller within my environment. Did anyone know that Mimikatz could do that? Anyone know what Mimikatz is? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Everyone's like, ah, just don't passwords. It's like, you can do a lot more than that. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. So we have to make sure that we verify our requirements. Again, questions to ask yourself. What are your, you know, were your security controls be able to, you know, prevent or detect that? Uh, do you have that visibility to see it? And visibility is crucial when it comes to uh, defensive security. And uh, how is the activity identified? Are there any other variants that we could apply to this? Uh, maybe you have some reference links or research, so on and so forth. Just, just record all of them. You also need to know what improvements. Right? Do we need to make any changes that would help? Just because you found an issue doesn't mean that uh, anything's going to be done about it. So you need to also provide like how we're going to fix this. Uh, if it's a hardening configuration thing, then yes. Uh, if it's a detection rule, maybe you need to enhance that detection rule, maybe you need another, whatever it is. And then if you're completely lacking visibility, then you need to improve it. So just, just think about those things when you're, when you're closing this out and suggest uh, how to fix it. You also provide this kind of summary report. Again, this could be for you or for really uh, CISO or your ISO or whatever, but you need to document your findings. I recommend like Jira, but you could use any sort of internal wiki or um, any sort of, don't use Teams or SharePoint, please, but um, something like Jira. Jira is probably the best. Uh, you document your test, like what you ran, the results, positive or negative, and any of those improvements that you can make across. Maybe that report goes to IoT. Be like, hey guys, we need you to improve, you know, uh, these hardening controls that we have around uh, memory dumps or whatever. Uh, you just need to provide those and, and you can show, this is what I ran, this is my test, this is the result, we need to fix this. So overall, this is the entire flow. Um, it is, you know, again, determine, we're going to say, why are you testing? We need to understand that, as well as what are you testing and our overall strategy. Where are we getting our test? Where are we uh, planning on going? Uh, just so we have kind of an even ground. Create, uh, whether we need to define our scope, our variables, uh, and all the deliverables. We execute it. Again, I recommend a topic operator, but you can just run them by yourself. If you don't want to learn a new thing, cool, just go run a test. Like, the commands are right there, you can copy and paste them from GitHub, throw them in a VM, run it, and see what the hell happens. Just make sure it's isolated a little bit, right? Like, don't, don't do it on your computer, please. And then examine, again, record all those observations, and then that closure process, where we're actually verifying that everything that we wanted to test to be tested, uh, and all of that was met, as well as uh, improvements and that report. So, that's kind of the, the whole testing process. I, again, did not want to go all the way into Atomic Operator because that's a whole other talk. Hope this was helpful. Uh, go and again, start, start testing. Now, do it now. Like, seriously, leave. <laughs> Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Um, here are some resources again Twitter, blog, you know, all that. You can take a picture or whatever. Uh, thank you again. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.